Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to APL Apollo Tubes Limited Q1 FY25 earnings conference call hosted by Ambit Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kumar Swamy from Ambit Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first quarter FY25 post result conference call of APL Apollo Tubes. From the management we have with us, Mr. Sanjay Gupta, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Deepak Goyal, Director of Operations, Mr. Anwar Gupta, Chief Strategy Officer, and Mr. Chetan Khandelwal, Chief Financial Officer. Now I'll hand over the call to the management for an opening remark, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Kumar, um, and uh, thanks to Ambit Capital for hosting uh, APL Apollo Tubes for its uh, quarter one FI25 earnings call. And uh, thanks to all the participants uh, uh, who have joined uh, uh, to, uh, to attend this call. I welcome everyone uh, and uh, wish you a pleasant day. What a start to the year uh, for our company uh, with the steel prices uh, in the reversal mode after a gap of uh, four years. If you remember, we have been talking about this uh, all the time that uh, in India, the steel price inflation environment has to reverse. Um, uh, the, the, the prices has to come at par with the global steel prices. And, um, and, um, and it got triggered uh, in the last four or five months uh, with the commencement of a new upstream steel capacity which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which hit the markets um, um, since December of 2023 and in the anticipation of new capacity which is going to hit the market over the next two to three years. So as we are talking, steel prices are already down by rupees 3,000 per ton uh, from the recent highs, and if we compare it with last year, uh, they are down by almost 7,000 rupees a ton. This uh, benefits APL Apollo in two ways. Um, uh, number one is that uh, our company is uh, India's largest steel buyer, so this uh, all the incremental capacity which is coming in the market it gives APL Apollo a better negotiation uh, power. Uh, 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 in front of the steel suppliers. Uh, plus, um, as, uh, as, um, as you all know, that uh, our finished goods uh, uh, replace uh, conventional inefficient uh, construction products like uh, secondary scrap steel, wooden structures, aluminum, rebars, cement and concrete, uh, um, steel angles and channels, long steel products, with the lower uh, input raw material cost, uh, the affordability for our product as well as the acceptance for our product uh, improve significantly. And, um, and uh, we are glad to share that, uh, that, uh, that environment of uh, deflationary steel prices uh, is, is, is already here and is uh, visible pretty strong uh, um, for the next years as new capacity keeps on coming in. At the same time, uh, the falling steel environment uh, brings its own challenges uh, like uh, industry destocking, heavy discounting in the short term and the minor inventory write downs as well. So we are geared, uh, uh, we have geared ourselves uh, to play on a strategy, short term gain and uh, long term gain. Our assumption is that uh, steel prices uh, can uh, further go down by three, four thousand rupees a ton um, and whatever fall has to happen, uh, it will happen uh, by Q2. And we see all the pain uh, from July to September uh, uh, months, after which uh, second half should be pretty solid. Anyway, our current focus is to maintain the sales uh, volume momentum, which we gained in quarter one with 721,000 ton uh, sales volume. We are not overly concerned uh, on margin expansion in the short term because uh, we know that uh, we have a lot of operating leverage uh, benefits that will start coming into play as we increase our utilization levels. Coming to quarter one performance, um, um, I think what looks a bit weaker is our uh, EBITDA spreads. Now the reported EBITDA of 4,183 per ton um, could have been slightly higher by 150 per ton. It didn't happen uh, because we booked um, a notional expense uh, on account of ESOP policy in Q1. 
plus we spent some extra money on uh, on a brand campaign um, because uh, we wanted to launch a few products so that's uh, non marketing in nature one data point um, we would like to highlight is uh, the expansion in our gross margin spreads it improved 335 rupees per ton on yoy basis and um, and 442 rupees per ton on qoq basis this uh, this does reflect that uh, that uh, uh, because um, our our uh, uh, new products from uh, raipur and dubai plants are giving us better uh, product mix that's why our gross margin uh, is expanding although it is not visible in the ebitda spreads yet because of uh, because of uh, operating leverage that is yet to play out just to point out uh, uh, our slide number 19 um, in the presentation which shows the potential uh, profitability and roc profile which uh, our company can uh, achieve with 100% utilization levels we have mentioned uh, a conservative ebitda of 5000 rupees per ton um, uh, please understand that we have not lowered our guidance it is just uh, the demonstration uh, that at, even at 5000 per ton what kind of uh, what kind of uh, roc our company can uh, generate uh, 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 at a sustainable rate now please allow me to share the progress in our raipur and dubai plants um, um uh, in 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 raipur uh, we have four product capacity with a uh, capacity of almost uh, 1.1 uh, million tons out of uh, out of these two are highly innovative and uh, and uh, two are uh, value added products now coming to the heavy structural segment uh, where uh, the utilization levels are around uh, 58% for roofing sheet uh, our utilization levels are uh, around 89% for uh, super light structurals our utilization rate is 52% and for uh, coated thicker sheet our utilization level is uh, 48% on overall basis the raipur plant is running at 61% uh, utilization rate just to highlight again that uh, 1.1 million ton of capacity is our saleable capacity not the main plate capacity that's how we rate um, uh, capacity for each of our plants and at the company level as well Uh, Dubai has uh, four lines uh, uh, which are capable of uh, manufacturing products starting 15 mm by 15 mm till uh, 300 mm by 300 mm two lines got uh, commissioned uh, um, last year and two lines got commissioned uh, just in the last three weeks uh, so ramp up is uh, pretty strong uh, as we speak now uh um, with the total current capacity of uh, 300000 ton uh, the utilization level for dubai in uh, quarter 1 was around 30% but uh, since uh, the two new mills uh, just got commission so so utilization levels will uh, improve uh, significantly over the next uh, 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 few quarters now if we look at the overall uh, levers uh, uh, for our sales volume in the coming quarters uh, there are three uh, which we uh, can see through number one is the stability in input raw material prices which will bring uh, element of uh, restocking in the uh, channel which will boost our volumes number two is uh, that uh, we shall be taking market share from the secondary scrap steel because now the the pricing gap between our product and uh, scrap steel um, pipe uh, is is like 5% which used to be 20% um, in the last 15 months so so we will definitely take market share uh, from this segment which has become an equal size industry compared to our uh, addressable sr coal tube industry third is that uh, post uh, monsoons um, and uh, budget allocations um, uh, the construction sector should uh, start doing well in india from the both government and the uh, private side So, so we expect that uh, 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 Q2, despite these challenges, should be better than Q1, and second half should be significantly better than the first half. Uh, and based on these factors, we are confident that uh, we should be doing 3.2 million ton of sales volume for FY25, uh, which is uh, uh, which is in line with our guidance uh, for this year. um as far as the margin is concerned the uh, q2 should remain under pressure as there is lot of uncertainty still um, uh, in the in the in the um, in the steel uh, upstream sector how the prices are going to settle down 
the the dealers, um, uh, the channel partners, the distributors, the retailers, um, they are still afraid of uh, stocking the uh, material. So we need to stick to our strategy of uh, of uh, discounting and um, um, and and uh, and uh, gaining the volumes. And 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 we don't know the uh, the um, uh, the the um, how how deep steel pipe production could go from these levels. So we will see if there are any minor uh, inventory write downs also in 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 quarter two. But whatever has to happen, we believe that uh, Q2 will bottom out, which uh, will uh, which will uh, give a very clean slate uh, uh, for uh, growth to our company from October month onwards. Um, and and uh, anyways, the levers for our margin expansion are many. Like number one, uh, the better product mix um, as our gross margin spreads um, are increasing quarter on quarter. Anyways, number two is operating leverage gains uh, with the better utilization level in uh, Riker and Dubai plants. Number three is a better pricing for our uh, general products um, as. Uh, as the price gap between scrap steel and uh, our product is uh, low, is reducing, um, so so we may uh, we may have better pricing uh, as well in the in the standard products. Number four is the better nego uh, the better negotiation uh, power uh, uh, to buy steel from the steel mills um, in the country. Number five is uh, lower brand spends uh, for the rest of FI25 or whatever we uh, uh, major spends we finished in Q1. And uh, number six is our own uh, continuous drive uh, to keep on uh, working on cost uh, rationalization, be it power, steel wastage, consumables, freight, etc. Day in, day out, uh, we are trying to we are trying to uh, work on uh, these cost elements and bring them down. Lastly, uh, lastly, uh, if you look at our working capital for Q1, um, uh, it's at three days, so there is a slight increase uh, in the net debt position for the company. However, we should remain uh, near net debt uh, zero position uh, throughout FI25, uh, with uh, surplus cash uh, being uh, visible on balance sheet from FI26 onwards. And uh, and uh, and and just to complete uh, that, our uh, expansion plan for five million ton capacity uh, in the in the next uh, in the in the next uh, twelve to fifteen months uh, is on is on track. Uh, we have uh, we uh, we are going to add uh, three new plants now, small plants, uh, which is part of our regional uh, penetration strategy. Uh, one is uh, Siliguri uh, to cater to East Market, uh, which we have uh, highlighted. And um, and the two new uh, two new uh, plants, one in Gorakhpur and one in Ahmedabad. Also, we have uh, we have uh, uh, planned uh, to uh, to bring them on live. Uh, um, um, Gorakhpur just to cater to the Eastern UP market uh, and and Bihar and Odisha belt, uh, which can be catered uh, well through that um, uh, geography. And uh, and Ahmedabad. Uh, uh, is uh, Gujarat is a very good market for us. Right now, we are servicing that market from uh, mainly from our North plants and uh, Raipur right plants. So, to benefit uh, for the freight, uh, it makes sense uh, to have a small plant in Ahmedabad as well. So, um, so, uh, so the capex is in line with like five six hundred crores what we had guided uh, last time um, that uh, is required to take us to five million ton. Uh, we may not be adding. Um, New mills, all the new mills for these plants. A lot of these uh, plants will we will see the uh, with shifting of existing mills from uh, current plants to these new plants. Uh, so, um, so, see, um, so I, I guess uh, four quarters on the line, we will be sitting on uh, five million ton uh, saleable capacity, which uh, uh, which we will uh, uh, which we target utilize by. FI27 and the current capacity, saleable capacity, which is available with us, is 4.5 million tons anyway. So, so idea is uh, to, uh, to to do 3 million, 3.2 million tons this year and 20-25% uh, growth uh, next year, and post that uh, to achieve 5 million tons by FI27. That's all uh, from our side. Uh, happy to take questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. 
If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers and, and a very challenging quarter. Uh, my first question is essentially on the, uh, if I look at other expenses, why do you have explained in your uh, opening comments that there were certain non-recurring items over there? So uh, other expenses and employee costs both have gone up significantly. Now, if you could uh, quantify these non-recurring items that possibly we could take out in our forecast going ahead, that would be very helpful. So, Amit, uh, 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 the nature of other expenses, uh, um, some expenses are uh, non-recurring and some are recurring as well. Um, so, I'll, 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 I'll explain in detail. Number one is that uh, employee cost, if you see, in uh, Q4 was uh, uh, was around 64 crores. Um, uh, sorry, uh, Q1, uh, uh, Q4 uh, last year was around uh, 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 70 crores, right? Uh, which right now is 80 crores, right? So, uh, so, so five crore impact is uh, for ESOP. Four to five crore is on account of ESOP, which is notional in nature. And uh, of course, uh, seven eight percent increment uh, we uh, uh, we have uh, we had in the company. Uh, so I uh, so for the rest of the quarter, you should uh, build in seventy five crores uh, um, per quarter. Okay. Then uh, then the other expense uh, which uh, which is higher and it is recurring in nature is uh, is the freight cost per ton. Um, uh, freight, if you see, uh, uh, has gone up because from Raipur. Uh, we are selling uh, value-added products like roofing sheet and uh, super coated sheet. So here, because of the volume is lower for the uh, truck load, the freight cost per ton uh, goes up. But then uh, you get uh, paid from your customers as well, right? So the outward freight cost is always paid for. Um, so, um, so, so that's another impact. Third is uh, power and fuel also went up. Um, because in Raipur, we are still not on um, renewable uh, power yet. Because, uh, we have signed up uh, with uh, with uh, with these solar power producers, so we will start getting the benefits as the plant when the plant will be ready. It will take around nine months, uh, and then the power cost uh, will come down. So, so that will settle down in FI26 for sure. But for rest of FI25, uh, it will remain elevated. And then lastly, uh, which needs to be highlighted is, uh, uh, is the brand spends. Uh, Q1 was a bit heavy. Uh, we, we paid for the ad shoot and, uh, and, and, uh, and 360 degree uh, brand campaign, which we undertook. Um, um, so, so in the next nine months, uh, it will be significantly lower than uh, what we had in uh, Q1. And, and, and lastly, uh, and lastly, uh, uh, <clears throat> there are also some charges uh, which we are getting, which we are giving outsourcing for outsourcing jobs, right? Uh, because we have uh, developed a specialty tube uh, uh, for uh, for solar structures for uh, for uh, for the largest uh, uh, solar power producer in the country, and we have to uh, get it coated, right, from outside. So, so those charges also come into come into uh, other expenses, but of course we do get our markup uh, for that. That's why our NSR um, um, is going up. Mr. Amit, does that answer your question? Hello. Mr. Amit, can you hear us? Yeah, that does answer my question. I'm moving on to my second question now. Hello. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So the second question is, uh, you have uh, mentioned that there are uh, two plants that you are thinking of, Gorakhpur and Ahmedabad. Gorakhpur, particularly interesting location. And uh, you mentioned about Silikuri as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so just wanted to understand the configuration of these plants, whether they will be 
also uh, on DFT and what kind of products do we intend to produce from uh, the plant. And since you are shifting some of the capacity lines to so capacity, so how will the capacity go up to 5 million tons? Just wanted to understand that. So, Amit, uh, see, I mean, uh, we want to cater to both the markets, um, you know, um, uh, um, uh, like if we take, uh, say, Gorakhpur and Ahmedabad. Yeah. So, so structured key tubes, uh, right, you know, we cater to two segments. One is uh, square and rectangular. Second is circular, right? Uh, of course, circular and um, square and rectangular are a major proportion of our sales volume. So, so any, 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 any mill, which is going to produce square and rectangular, it has to be DFT for us, right? Um, um, and for circular, we must install the conventional one, okay? E each of these plants will be having capacity of 200,000 tons initially, right? Uh, and um, and um, um, and um, some of the mills from our Bangalore plant and old rifle plant, we will move uh, uh, to these locations. And uh, two mills, three mills, we we will order new as well, right? So it's a mix of uh, everything. The uh, the uh, the objective to achieve here uh, are two. Number one, local penetration, regional penetration, better servicing, and second is uh, to lower the freight costs. And in terms of product, we'll be producing uh, everything, whatever, I mean, square, uh, tubes. Will we be producing, uh, will there, is there a, uh, a a thought process to produce sheets also? Because that region might have the uh, color-coated thin gauge sheets that you will be produce at RIPO. No, so these are tube plants, um, um, Amit. Um, we are yet to decide on strategy for expanding capacity for uh, roofing sheets or thicker coated sheets, uh, but uh, but uh, in our grand plans of uh, 10 million ton, right, um, uh, these products uh, don't have too much contribution. Okay. Thanks a lot. That's very helpful and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of CA Garvid Goyal from Invest Analytic Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, Anna Audible. Yes, you are. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, just one question on the beta curtain, like you guided for 3.2 million tons volume. Uh, what is the beta curtain guidance for this year? So, um, so see, I mean, uh, uh, Q1, as um, you can see, is around uh, 4,200. Q2, we are not yet certain, right? It will depend on how the uh, upstream steel uh, prices behave. But our endeavor will be uh, to uh, to at least match uh, what we did uh, last year. If uh, uh, it not improve that, uh, I think on uh, on uh, on uh, during October investor call, we will have uh, we will have a better idea of uh, EBITDA pattern. So thank you very much for all the rest of the future. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Gagandeep from Invest Analytic Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Mr. Gagandeep, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Sir, my question is already answered. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sneha from Nuama. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, would it be possible for you to give the breakup of capacity by FI25 till the time we reach uh, 5 million tons? So, where all will be having capacity and, you know, what all will be the capacity since you'll be making some shifts from other plants to new plants like Gorakhpur and Ahmedabad, like you mentioned? So Sneha, we have given uh, product-wise capacity uh, in our presentation. Um, um, there are there is this slide of uh, decommoditizing uh, product portfolio. Uh, we will find uh, five million ton uh, of uh, of uh, proposed capacity. It is on slide eight. So do we have plant-wise capacity also by FI25 there? Of course, but we don't share that, uh, 
Understood. Uh, secondly, a more broader question, Anubhav, uh, how are we planning to address the gap between secondary and primary steel? From a couple of quarters, we have been seeing that, you know, one of the reasons for our volumes not being that great, especially with general products, is that the gap, you know, widens between the secondary and primary steel. Of course, it's narrowed down currently to about 3 to 4 odd rupees, uh, but generally, historically, we have been seeing this to be a major reason. Uh, you know, for our volumes not being that great. How are we addressing this, this issue? And what's the confidence of strong volume growth in H2, uh, given we don't have an outlook right now between the primary and the secondary steel price gap? So, Sneha, you need to look our product portfolio in two categories. One is standard general commodity, which is 35-40% of my portfolio. Rest is uh, uh, value added and super value added products. Okay. So, so my value added and super value added products, uh, they have no threat from uh, uh, scrap steel tubes, right? Because scrap steel tubes um, are incapable of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, addressing of addressing that application. What our products are doing, right? So, the competition which we face uh, from scrap steel tube is general. Right, and this is one segment. If you look from FI20, we have not been able to grow this segment. Right, from FI20, if you see, my general sales used to be like uh, 0 0.9 million ton, and um, and um, and last year uh, we did 1.1 million ton. So there is hardly any growth, right, um, in in general segment. Um, and this is because uh, of uh, availability of uh, low grade uh, scrap steel. Um, uh, tube product which is available in the market where uh, the manufacturers and uh, the uh, dealers are, uh, are, uh, are taking benefit of price gap, right? Um, and why this happened in last, over the five year, over the last five years is because HR coil prices in India, they have been on the inflationary mode, which was triggered by Corona, right, uh, in 2020. Then in 2022, uh, Russian Ukraine war, which triggered uh, further the steel prices uh, uh, to go up globally. HR coil, which used to be 35, 40,000 rupees per ton commodity before Corona, it went up to like 65, 70,000 rupees per ton uh, by mid of 2022, right? Um, uh, but but the cost of production for uh, uh, for uh, for scrap steel that remains stagnant. So that's why the gap. Right, which used to be like before Corona. Also, the gap used to be rupees high per kg, but it shot up to 20 rupees per kg, and that's where these uh, small uh, steel melters in um, in Raipur belt, in uh, Mandi Kovingar belt, in Chennai belt, they popped up because there was this uh, arbitrage, right? Uh, uh, but uh, but we were of the view that this steel price inflation is not sustainable, okay, and uh, we are seeing that. Uh, being reversed already. The second factor you need to understand is the cost of production for blast furnace steel versus cost of production for scrap steel. So you can uh, check with any steel expert uh, in the country that uh, that the cost of production for blast furnace steel is lower than the cost of production for uh, scrap steel, right? So blast furnace steel manufacturers have uh, have uh, the window. Okay, uh, to uh, to still lower the prices, but uh, scrap steel uh, steel producers uh, they don't have uh, the window available to lower the prices, right? So whenever, like I said, that the gap is already down to three four thousand rupees a ton, right? Um, and it can further go down um, by September as the new capacity in upstream steel sector keeps on hitting the market. So, so we are fairly confident that uh, that uh, HR coil will will substitute uh, the scrap steel tube, um, and then uh, we are also taking initiatives like making the consumer aware about the poor quality of scrap steel, what they are using, right? Uh, because ultimately, structural steel, whether it is for handrails, for uh, for fencing, for doors, etc. Right, uh, um, if it is not of a very good quality, there is always a, a chance of an accident. Right, so we are uh, making the consumer aware. Secondly, the the level of uh, pollution which these uh, small melting shops uh, 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 they they uh, they pollute the environment. 
that's also very very hazardous right um, and um, and the government uh, given the fact that uh, they are pro climate they are taking all the steps to improve the environment in the country so so i guess at some point uh, they may also uh, take this uh, step uh, to to uh, to halt this uh, highly pollutive industry um um so yes i mean um, we are uh, fairly confident that um, as uh, as hr coal prices uh, remain stable around 45 48000 rupees per ton we have a very good chance to take the market share back uh, from our uh, scrap steel segment i understand anubhav thanks thanks a lot and all the best thank you next question is from the line of kunal kotari from centrum broking please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, my specific question is regard to the apollo dry core as is you know you know basis the volume are stagnant but on the margin front it is uh, down significantly in the trend that we are seeing in this particular segment for last year three years it's it just a downward slope so can you just make me understand what is happening in this particular segment why uh we are seeing such a you know huge uh, downward slope which is happening continuously no actually uh, you need to uh, tell me the product segment now because tricot products uh, got divided into two categories one is light and second is rust proof so which segment are you catering to rust proof rust proof okay so yes uh, rust proof uh, rust proof is our uh, zinc coated uh, uh, pipes uh, which are mainly sold in the uh, which are mainly sold in the coastal markets right uh, there the um, um, standard black pipe doesn't work because uh, because of the moisture um, in the environment so so the fabricators the um, uh, fabricators need uh, coated products right so that's where we sell our rust proof um now this uh, segment if you see it has uh, it has a pressure of uh, aggressive sales growth uh, because uh, right on the market is constrained towards uh, um, coastal markets only right although we are we are uh, making a drive to uh, we are making a we are making a drive to we are making a drive to um, uh, uh, to expand this market in non coastal markets as well Uh, but but it, it's a it's a it's a it's a long drawn process. Um, and Sanjay, you want to add to this? Growth business. Okay, yeah. So so yes. Uh, um, uh, I guess I guess. Uh, uh, I mean, as uh, the the uh, as the market expands. Uh, for this product beyond the uh, coastal markets uh, uh, we will uh, we will see uh, the growth uh, going to like 15 20% levels but right now we are able to take the growth whatever is uh, uh, whatever the coastal markets are growing at a natural rate uh, i understand but uh, in specific reason that we used to have margin 7 to 8000 Then last year was around six thousand to six thousand five hundred. Now it is below five thousand rupees per ton. Like, so you know, are we losing the competition to other players in this particular in the rustful segment? What is the core reason for such a steep decline? Okay, so if you look at if you compare it with the margins uh, which were like two to three years back, seven to eight thousand rupees per ton. at that point of time what was happening was that in india um, after covid uh, the indian steel producers they started exporting uh, coated coils okay uh, in international markets so that uh, brought the short supply uh, situation in india right uh, it benefited apollo because uh, we had our in house uh, galvanization plants okay we used to buy bare hr coils and galvanize those coils and then uh, converting those coils into Uh, coated tubes. Um, uh, when there was a shortage of uh, galvanized coil in the country, uh, our competitors were uh, buying expensive uh, coils from the market, and then and then uh, they were converting the tubes. Right. So we had a very good arbitrage for three four quarters um, in that segment, and we have highlighted that in our investor calls um, earlier as well. Now that situation got uh, course corrected. 
right now now the galvanized coil prices um, have come down um, um, in india and uh, and the arbitrage the benefit what apollo has um, uh, in for having the um, uh, in house galvanization unit so that's now at fair um, at parity uh, with our competitors and of course yes competitors have also uh, put up uh, the galvanization mill right uh, so um, so yes uh, i mean it's a competitive market but we are maintaining our market share of 65 70% um, if you if you do some channel checks um, in strong coastal markets like kerala uh, mangalore belt uh, goa belt uh, right um, we uh, we we continue to have a lion market share there but but yes i mean um, uh, to grow aggressively in this segment we need to create this market beyond the um, coastal markets which which we are working on okay uh, thanks uh, second question is in regard to our overall capacity you mentioned that currently we have around 4.5 million ton right so uh, firstly like uh, from previous call what i remember is that it, we were 3.8 million ton so this uh, around 0.6 million ton where it has been added and additional uh, 0.5 million ton you are going to catch up uh, in next 12 months so where it is going to come right so uh, so so this is across uh, the categories uh, um, um, right uh, actually the data point of 3.8 million ton in uh, presentation is old one um, right uh, right now we are almost near 4.5 million ton and uh, it is uh, across the categories um, we can uh, share the updated uh, uh, product wise list uh, to you uh, separately okay sure thanks a lot that's all from my side thank you next question is from the line of aditya velekar from access securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity so my question is with respect to vita patan shaping up for fy26 how do you see that and uh, this is in context of our value added product share so how do you see our wrap share increasing uh, in fy26 in the context of any market creation any visibility on the ground that you see that the wrap share will increase and that will lead our vita patan going forward so definitely if you look at our uh, um, wrap share from dubai and raipur plants right as those plants are ramping up uh, um, uh, we have been giving uh, the data point of utilization levels which you would uh, appreciate that quarter on quarter the utilization levels are going up and uh, and and our gross spread uh, per ton is also improving quarter on quarter so um, so so we are continuously working to create the market for innovative products uh, from raipur whether it is for the heavy structural pipes or the thicker coated sheet um, um, uh, which are like the two most innovative uh, products from raipur um, and um, and um, and dubai also uh, with introduction of uh, sizes up to 300 by 300 mm uh, the mill uh, commission last week only we are seeing a very good order and flow for uh, for that mill in particular so, uh, so so yes i mean this 65% of our portfolio that's uh, uh, that's our crown um, right and um, and uh, and we continue to work uh, uh, to to improve uh, uh, the the uh, the sales um, in this segment so will it be fair to assume we beta per ton reaching near 5000 rupees per ton in fy26 so uh, so uh, so uh, so see i mean uh, if you look at the sheet right uh, uh, um, where we have mentioned like how we can reach 5000 per ton right uh, it's it's a question of uh, it's a question of it's a it's, it's a question of uh, um, like you know uh, how my plants are utilized and what kind of operating leverage uh, benefits i get right but if market becomes stable right uh, in q2 which we expect right Q3, Q4, we start doing 800,000 ton, uh, 850,000 ton kind of uh, quarterly volume. Then yes, um, uh, APL uh, uh, is capable of uh, throwing 5,000 per ton EBITDA during uh, those quarters. Why FI26? Understood. Uh, my second question is with respect to the net debt. Uh, so uh, means what I understand is that uh, the working capital should come down because the steel prices have gone down. 
uh, and uh, that should not be the reason for increasing the net debt. Uh, is it correct or is there anything else which I am missing here? So, uh, so see, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, last quarter our working capital day was zero. Now it is three, right? So it's a very minor movement, right? Uh, there are multiple factors. Like you have to collect payments uh, uh, from your clients, uh, some of the projects uh, where there is like four or five day de delay, that's all, right? And uh, secondly, to answer your question on inventory, yes, so we will, uh, you will see the devaluation in inventory uh, going forward because prices uh, uh, have fallen recently, right? So, uh, so on the balance sheet, it is on average basis. Um, uh, so as we close September balance sheet, you will see you should see, we should see um, uh, uh, some devaluation in the inventory levels. Okay, and that should drive our uh, net debt down to zero level again. Like I said, 1.5 billion INR on a balance sheet size of uh, like 50 billion INR, uh, it's almost zero. And, uh, and, and we will uh, stick to net zero balance sheet for uh, the rest of FI25. Um, yes, I mean, but it should be Near zero. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. That's my question. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kunal Vora from White Whale Cap Partners. Please go ahead. Mr. Vora, your line is unmuted. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, this is Hardik Doshi. Uh, I just wanted to check, uh, you know, in your uh, recent presentation, it shows that in FI24, the structural steel uh, size for uh, the scrap steel is about 4.5 million. And in the previous, uh, in 2023, it was 3.6 million. So is it correct that the scrap steel is grown by 25% in FI24? You'll have to repeat the question, sorry. Yeah, so in in a recent presentation, uh, when you're talking about the structural steel tube market, right, you're talking about uh, it's 9 million tons out of which 4.5 million is scrap steel based tubes. The same presentation, uh, you know, uh, previously in, uh, indicated that it was 3.6 million in SI23. So it seems like uh, the scrap steel based tube is grown by about 25 percent. So I just wanted to check if that is actually the case. Yeah, that is right. Uh, uh, that is right. Uh, um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, the growth in the structural steel tube segment uh, got uh, taken up by the <coughs> steel, uh, steel producers um, because of this arbitrage uh, they had. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so now, going forward, you were expecting by 2013 to 4.5 million to kind of degrow to 4 million. Uh, and I mean, the uh, logic says uh, the logic says it should because outside India there is no country where uh, you have this product available. It's only on uh, uh, government behest or I don't know uh, whose behest that uh, this industry uh, is uh, surviving and thriving as of now. But uh, when uh, the blast furnace steel prices um, uh, are lower than uh, scrap steel uh, prices, then why should this um, um, industry do well? I mean, the logic says it should not. Okay. Uh, the second question I had is when you mentioned that the spread has now come off uh, to 5%. Is that as of now, as things stand, and is there any seasonality related to monsoons for the spread, or there is no connection between that? For which product? For, for the, the scrap steel versus your HR coil, the differential has come down to five percent. I believe that's what you mentioned, right? No, because because the new capacity in HR coil, the the new capacity in glass furnace steel has come online since December of 2023. Yeah, so and powered started its HR coil mill. NMDC steel mill started its HR coil mill. JSW started its uh, mill in uh, in uh, in Bilari. Now, uh, in next six months, the Dolby plant will start. Uh, Tata Steel's uh, Palinganagar plant will start. J Jindal Steel and Power will uh, start uh, uh, its second plant. Right. Uh, Arthur Mistral Nippon Steel will start uh, its HR coil mill, if not this year, next year. 
So we have a very strong visibility for the next two years that uh, India will uh, keep on uh, witnessing steel price, uh, steel capacity expansion. See, from 2018 till 2023, what we have heard, India's steel capacity is 120 million ton, 120 million ton, 120 million ton, 120 million ton, 120 million ton. It has not increased. What has happened is the consolidation of the sector. SR Mill got acquired, uh, Bhushan Power got acquired, Bhushan Steel got acquired, Monet Spark got acquired. A uh, uh, lot of mills uh, uh, which got sick, they got acquired, they got consolidated, right? And it takes five years uh, for any greenfield plant to come online. JSW, which was expanding from 2018, Tata Steel, which was expanding from 2018. Um, uh, uh, so those plants are now coming online. So from 2023 December till 2025 December, HR coil capacity from blast furnace should increase by 50% in the country, right? Uh, um, so, so and when cost of production flow for blast furnace steel is lower than cost of production for scrap steel, then why should scrap steel uh, be sold? Number one. Number two, when scrap steel uh, scrap steel production is such highly pollutive industry, why it should survive? Number three, when it is such a poor quality product, why government should allow this uh, to uh, uh, to survive, right? Um, um, so logic says that uh, this uh, segment should not be growing, right, uh, going forward. Uh, let's see. Okay, got it. Uh, my last question is, uh, you know, within uh, the organized space, uh, you know, uh, your competitors have announced a lot of expansion plans as well. Uh, so how do we plan to kind of keep up our differentiation, market share, and do we command a pricing uh, premium to our competition, and how do we plan to sustain that? It's a good question. Um, um, it will be good uh, for everyone of us um, if you could highlight like, what, uh, what kind of uh, players you're talking about uh, who are expanding the capacities, so that uh, we can answer the question accordingly. Because uh, because uh, because all these pipe steel pipe producers, right? No one is as unique as Apollo in terms of focus on the structural steel tube segment, and that too from HR coil. So so you need to see that uh, if you're talking about someone who is good in uh, API pipes, oil and gas pipes, water transportation pipes, or in scrap steel pipes, then he's not my competitor. My competitor is uh, a manufacturer who is using blast furnace steel from top five producers in India, and he's making structural steel tubes, right? Uh, where I command, if not 90, at least 75% market share, of course, uh, uh, that's our gut feeling. We can't uh, put this in writing, but uh, if we talk to 200 of our top customers, uh, top dealers, um, uh, we get this sense. Okay. I mean, I was talking about guys like JPL, you know, and, and, and a few of these other guys that were uh, have announced. Right. So, so again, JPL is a scrap steel uh, tube producer. Recently, they acquired a steel melting unit uh, called Nava something. Right, um, so so it, it's a it's a scrap uh, melting shop, right? Uh, so 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 again, I mean, the point I'm trying to make is that they may do well in their segment, and we wish uh, everyone um, uh, good luck. But but uh, you need to see that uh, what expansion they are doing in HR coil tube uh, segment and in structural, not water transportation, not oil and gas, not automotive precision tubes but structural steel tubes. Okay, got it. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mayank Bhandari from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> Sir, my first question is on the numbers you have given on slide number 19. Uh, APL's Q1 FY25 working capital goes from minus 25 crore to 46456 crore at full utilization. Uh, can you explain that much of jump? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So even this, we have taken conservative. Uh, that for uh, APL, we have taken five days of networking capital, and for new plants, we have taken around seven, eight days, uh, ten days of combined working capital. So again, these are conservative numbers. Uh, okay, not in line with uh, uh, not in line with uh, what we are at today. Uh, 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 similarly, like we get conservative EBITDA number as well of 5,000 per ton. So, so yes, I mean this is just to demonstrate uh, even at conservative numbers uh, what uh, we, we are going to achieve. So yes, I mean as per current uh, run rate of working capital, um, uh, the the, uh, the the working capital requirement will uh, decline significantly. So uh, the newer projects, so working capital requirement is lower. Of course, yes. Uh, apart from Dubai, Dubai has of course uh, 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 higher working capital compared to India, but our Raipur plant uh, should be more or less similar to what uh, APL Apollo is. And also from the Dubai plant, what is the visibility on the export ramp up? Uh, is from the Indian plant? Right. No. So, uh, so idea to go to Dubai and put up uh, the plant is uh, is to is to expand uh, in the Middle East market plus the uh, plus the uh, plus the uh, uh, international markets of uh, U.S., Europe, uh, uh, etc. Right. Uh, um, uh, the strategy here is uh, first uh, we wanted to install and commission all the four mills, which happened like just two weeks ago. Um, in fact, just a week back, our port mill was commissioned last week only, and uh, and uh, and and now the sales team is uh, all out in the market, right? Booking orders for those mills, promoting the product, uh, because uh, this 300 by 300 dia size, uh, we are amongst the only we are the only company in Dubai which is offering this size, right? So uh, so ramp up will happen. Ramp up will happen. Our strategy is that uh, by FY27. Right, uh, we should be able to uh, utilize uh, all 300,000 ton available capacity uh, uh, um, to achieve our sales volume. Okay, and sir, if I were to look at uh, <laughs> uh, the presentation in, and uh, in the applications on slide number 45, you have given uh, certain ongoing inquiries, and uh, it says that 2,20,000 tons of heavy structural steel tubes are required for about 42 million square feet visibility. Just to understand it better, uh, if I derive a per square feet number uh, of almost what, 50 kg per square feet, would be a correct metric to understand this? 5 kg per square foot. Yeah, 5 kg per square foot. Hello, am I audible? That's right, 5 kg per square foot. So, I mean, just uh, this is 5 kg per square foot for, uh, let's say, high end of uh, application, which is uh, data center, aviation. Uh, what would we, it would be for different segments? Would it be different? To yes, so it depends on the load of the structure, right? For data center, um, uh, the consumption could be as big as 20 kg per square foot. For a in vanilla warehouse, the consumption could be one and a half kg per square foot. But on an average, the high-rise building of say five story, ten story, uh, the consumption comes out to be five kg per square foot. So this is the average. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Bandari. May we please request you to rejoin the queue for the, any follow-up questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abina from Standard Chartered Bank. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Just wanted uh, the breakup uh, for APL Apollo building for sales volume and a bit in Q1. Oh, see, I mean, we are not giving the absolute number, but we have told you the capacity available and the utilization level. So please calculate basis that. So, so 194,000 volume we have given for Raipur and Dubai. So, Raipur would be how much out of that uh, volume? 90%. Okay. And uh, the utilization that we are calculating, is it on 1.1 uh, 1 million or 1.5 million tons? 1.1. 1. 1.1 1. 1 for Raipur and 0. 0.3 for uh, Dubai. 
ओके एंड दी फाइव हंड्रेड टू सिक्स हंड्रेड करोर्स कैपेक्स अभी मेंशन फॉर दी थ्री प्लांट्स व्हाट इज दी अमाउंट व्हिच हैज ऑलरेडी बीन इनकर दी एक्सपेंस सो 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 फाइव हंड्रेड इज द रेसिडुअल कैपेक्स फाइव हंड्रेड करोर्स इज द रेसिडुअल कैपेक्स वी हैव एज ऑफ नाउ we have made payment like you know we're in process of payment making payment for uh, siliguri land and uh, gorakhpur land right uh, once uh, land is uh, in our possession then we capex for plant and building etc will go so um, so so put together we must have spent around uh, 200 to 250 crores uh, for these plants Okay, and uh, in our uh, previous quarter presentation, uh, you had given a breakup for the market share for the next uh, eight players as well. So, uh, just wanted to know the player two and three that we are mentioning here, ten percent market share for ancillary business and for oil and gas focused businesses. Who are the competitors uh, which have ten percent each? Player two and player three. Uh, we'll take this offline, please. uh okay sure. sure thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will take a last question from the line of shailesh raja from bnk securities please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity uh i have two questions to ask uh first of all what was our total outsourcing cost in fi24 Uh, in future, any plans for shifting these outsourcing items to in-house and trying to bring down the cost? Like in cold roll product, uh, we were buying it from steel companies, and now we are having separate lines for the uh, lower grade, which brought uh, down our cost significantly. So, in similar line, is there any scope for us to bring down the cost and having it in in-house? So, Salesh, uh, um, as of now, we are not doing any. Um, outsourcing job for finished goods okay it is zero today uh, because uh, we are yet to utilize our own capacity so there is no point of uh, uh, going on outsourcing model as of now once uh, we hit our own 5 million ton capacity utilization then uh, we will see um, if it makes sense to go more asset light and uh, look for outsourcing uh, uh, jobs Uh, but i think that is still 1 to 2 years uh, 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 from ahead of us from today right unless uh, we sell 300000 uh, 350 400000 ton for 2 3 consecutive months right um, um, uh, we are not looking for any outsourcing job okay in color coated sheet we do aluminum coating and do color coating also both these process are currently outsourced right say it again So in color coated sheet, we do aluminium mm-hmm. coating and also do color coating. So both these processes are currently outsourced. No, no, it's all in house, and it's not aluminium. It's uh, aluminium zinc, LU zinc. Yeah. Combination of aluminium and zinc. Yeah. It's all in house. It's all so. So the outsourcing, what we did, let me um, let me rehash that. The other expense which I mentioned was uh, the was what is is a is a. Is a is a tube border. Is a tube border, right? Uh, it's a 12 meter uh, tube which uh, goes uh, for a solar structure, right? Um, and we had we have to do hot dip galvanization. So our own uh, zinc baths, own zinc tanks. Uh, what we can maximum do is eight uh, meters, right? So above eight meters, uh, we send it uh, to uh, 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 to small units uh, near our plants. for our sourcing job so this is only for that product there is no other uh, job work which uh, we which we do for any uh, segment or any client it's only it's specifically for that uh, solar structure um, order okay okay got it my second question could you please talk about the exports business opportunity for the high diatio so 300 truck 300 500 truck 500 global cleaners players are making 15 rupees a bit uh, Uh, and considering our cost competitiveness larger capacity and we have presence in wide product size range from 300 to 300 to 1000 1000 so what is our plan to increase the volumes for the high diatios in the overseas market right so 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 for this the game plan is that first we install 300 by 300 in dubai which 
started uh, last week only right now the whole world knows that uh, in dubai we have this mill right uh, we are already we have already started booking orders uh, for this segment right now with 300 300 we are also uh, selling 500 by we are also promoting 500 and 500 from india uh, right so as a combo 300 300 from dubai local and 500 500 from india uh, now our customers uh, know that uh, uh, that we have this segment so yes uh, uh, um, it it has a strong potential um, if you ask us okay um, uh, it needs promotion it needs awareness okay uh, which uh, we are currently working on and i think um, uh, uh, i mean uh, if if this 300 300 mil uh, we are able to utilize it like you know completely um, um, uh, better or sooner than expected so i mean uh, if market requires we may install uh, 500 square uh, in dubai as well right uh, so uh, so so i guess uh, opportunity is there right uh, almost 40 million ton of uh, steel pipes uh, 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 steel pipe is traded uh, 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 ex india and china right globally okay um, so uh, so so as a plan we first went ahead with 300000 ton capacity right uh, which is which is like around the 3 4% uh, market share so i guess i guess um, 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 as um, as we see the ramp up from dubai we will keep on installing uh, uh, high value added uh, products including high dia pipe mill right but let's see how uh, how the existing mill performs how the existing plant performs once we have uh, green shoots visible uh, we will not uh, stay behind uh, from putting up the capacity In terms, how much we are doing in exports? I am sorry. In terms, how much we are doing no. in exports? Um, so it's around hundred thousand ton. Okay. Any target we have in next two three years? So it's the combination of like what we do from Dubai and India. So Dubai we have to ramp up to three hundred thousand ton anyway, right? And India, let's see, one hundred thousand remains same or uh, some cannibalization will also take place. Um, so so let's see. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. thank you uh, everyone um, um, again special thanks to ambit for hosting us uh, and uh, and uh, look forward to see you uh, uh, for uh, next uh, conference call thank you so much have a nice day thank you on behalf of ambit capital that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines